Good morning, everyone. This is Dennis Daly from Perth, Western Australia, with another recording for Voices of Calm. This morning's offering is The Ballad of Iskander by one of my favourite poets, James Elroy Flecker. It's quite a short poem, but as a, a sea-going voyage narrative, it ranks with other great poems on the same subject, like The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner and The Wreck of the Deutschland. So, I hope you enjoy this. The Ballad of Iskander Note Aflatun and Aristu and King Iskander are Plato, Aristotle and Alexander. Sultan Iskander sat him down on his golden throne in his golden crown and shouted, Wine and flute girls three and the captain ho of my ships at sea. He drank his bowl of wine. He kept the flute girls dancing till they wept, praised and kissed their painted lips, and turned to the captain of all his ships, and cried, The lord of our ships that go from the Persian Gulf to the pits of snow, inquire for men unknown to man, said Sultan Iskander of Yunistan. Darush is dead, and I am king of everywhere and everything. Yet leagues and leagues away for sure, the lion-hearted dream of war. Admiral, I command you sail, take you a ship of silver mail, and fifty sailors young and bold, and stack provision deep in the hold, and seek out twenty men that know all babel tongues that flaunt and flow. And stay, impress those learned two, old Aflatun and Aristu. And set your prow southwestern ways, a thousand bright and dimpling days, and find me lion hearted lords with breasts to feed our rusting swords. The captain of the ships bowed low, Sir, he replied, I will do so. And down he rode to the harbour mouth to choose a ship to carry him south. And he launched a ship of silver mail, and fifty lads to hoist the sail and twenty wise, all tongues they knew, and Aflatun, and Aristu. They had not dawned the second day, but the glittering galleon sailed away, and through the night, like one great bell, the marshalled armies sang farewell. In twenty days the silver ship had passed the isle of Serendip, and made the flat Araunian coasts inhabited at noon by ghosts. In thirty days the ship was far beyond the land of Calcobar, where men drink dead men's blood for wine and dye their beards a lizarine. But on the hundredth day there came storm with his windy wings aflame and drave them out to that lone sea whose shores are near eternity. For seven years and seven years sailed those forgotten mariners, nor could, they sp nor could they spy on either hand the faintest level of good red land. Bird or fish they saw not one, there swam no ship beside their own, and day, long, and day night long the lily deep lay round them with its flowers asleep. The beams began to warp and crack, the silver plates turned filthy black, and drooping down on the carven rails hung those once lovely silken sails. And all the great ship's crew, who were such noble lads to do and dare, grew old and tired of the changeless sky, and laid them down on the deck to die. And they who spake all tongues there be made antics with solemnity, or huddled, or closely huddled each to each, talked ribald in a foreign speech. And Aflatun and Aristu let their beards grow, and their beards grew round and round the mainmast tree, where they stood still and watched the sea. And day by day their captain grey knelt on the rotting poop to pray, and yet, despite ten thousand prayers, they saw no ship that was not theirs. 
when thrice the seven years had passed, they saw a ship, a ship at last, and tarnished glowed its silver mail, windless bellied its silken sail. With a shout the grizzled sailors rose, cursing the years of sick repose, and they who spake in tongues unknown gladly reverted to their own. The captain leapt and left his prayers, and hastened down the dark, and hastened down the dust-dark stairs, and taking to hand a brazen whip, he woke to life the long-dead ship. But Aflatun and Aristu, who had no work that they could do, gazed at the stranger ship and sea, with their beards around the mainmast tree. Nearer and nearer the new boat came, till the hands cried out the old ship's name. Silken sail to silver boat, we too shone when we first set float. Swifter and swifter the bright boat sped, but the hands spake thin like men long dead. How striking like that boat were we in the days, sweet days, when we put to sea. The ship all black and the ship all white met like the meeting of day and night, met, and there lay serene dark green a twilight yard of the sea between. And the twenty masters of foreign speech of every tongue they tried knew, and the twenty masters of foreign speech of every tongue they knew tried each. Smiling the silver captain heard, but shook his head and said no word. Then Aflatun and Aristu addressed the silver lord anew, speaking their language of Unistan, like countrymen to a countryman. And, Whence, they cried, O sons of pride, sail you the dark eternal tide? Lie your halls to the south or north, and who is the king that sent you forth? We live, replied that lord with a smile, a mile beyond the millionth mile. We know not south, and we know not north, and Sultan Iskander sent us forth. Said Aristu to Aflatun, Surely our king, despondent soon, has sent this second ship to find unconquered tracts of humankind. But Aflatun turned round on him, laughing a bitter laugh and grim. Alas, he said, O oh, Aristu, a weak white, a weak, a white weak, thin old fool are you, and does not yon ship, and does not yon silver ship appear as she had journeyed twenty year, and has that silver captain's face a mortal or immortal grace? Theirs is the land, as well I know, where live the shapes of things below. Theirs is the country where they do keep the images men see in sleep. Theirs is the land beyond the door, and theirs the, and theirs the old ideal shore. They steer our ship, behold our crew, ideal, and our captain too. And lo, beside that mainmast tree, two tall and shining forms I see, and they are what we ought to be, yet we are they, and they are we. He spake and some young zephyr stirred, the two ships touched, no sound was heard. The black ship crumbled into air, only the phantom ship was there. And a great cry rang round the sky of glorious singers sweeping by, and calm and fair on waves that shone, the silver ship sailed on and on. The End I hope you enjoyed that reading. I hope you enjoyed that reading. Have a good day and keep safe.